Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Catherine Rager of The Chef, You and I. Today, we are going to take a journey to the British Isles, where I lived for almost seven years. That's the reason why I wrote the book, the Elizabeth Bromwell series. And it tells you about my life in England. Some of it's true, some of it's not. You'll have to guess what's true or what's not. Then I brought some of the wonderful products that I have used over the years, like Guinness Draught Beer, like HP Sauce, Branston Pickle, Glen Fittish, and of course, Coleman's Mustard and Marmite. You know, as I lived there, I learned how to cook the British way, the Irish way, and the Scotch way, since I got to see all those wonderful countries. So today we are doing some of my favorite recipes from the British Isles. And the first recipe that we're going to do is my favorite, favorite, favorite. It's shepherd's pie. But since we're a healthy cooking show, I've lightened it up a little bit, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Then we're doing bangers and mash, another favorite of mine. And then a wonderful new dessert, but also a soup, a red lentil soup which takes just a little bit of time, but I think you're gonna enjoy all these wonderful, wonderful products and these wonderful dishes. So let's start with our first dish, shepherd's pie. You know, now we're gonna make our shepherd's pie the lighter, the lighter version. So the first thing that you wanna do is I use Yukon gold potatoes because they're just so nice. So we're gonna chop these up we're gonna chop these up, right? And then we're gonna put these actually into our pot here because we need to boil them like you're making, you're gonna be making mashed potatoes. And you know what I loved about living in England? The foods were so fresh, so delicious. Uh, unfortunately, you could gain some weight. So we took a lot of walks, bike rides, and everything else that we could to stay in shape. And you do a lot of walking in England. I don't know if you know that or not, but we lived on a farm in England called Chantry Farm. And we lived there for about five years and then we moved to another little town called Chantry Farm. Well, no, not Chantry Farm. I mean, we moved from Chantry Farm to Wicca Market because my kids were by that time in high school and they didn't want to live out in the country because we had about, oh, I'd say 500 acres. And on top of that, we had chickens, we had vegetables, we had wild pheasants, and I actually learned how to gather wild mushrooms for my British friends. And they were so sweet, I loved them so much. They really took care of me, and they loved my kids too. So, uh, my first day in England, I was in shock because I didn't know what to think, actually, because we moved uh, to the Woodbridge Hotel for a couple weeks, and maybe a month, and uh, then we moved into the house, and it kind of reminded me in the very beginning, before we redid it, kind of like an old farmhouse that hadn't been taken care of in a while, but the landlord was great. We redid the whole place, and we used to have a lot of military people come over and neighbors so that they could enjoy this beautiful place. It had six bedrooms. It was beautiful. So here we go, we're almost done. Now we've got the potatoes. I'm gonna add a little salt to it, and that's kosher salt. And we're gonna turn it on, because this takes a while, about 15 or 20 minutes till they get soft. So we're gonna turn this on, and let it go, until it actually gets really soft. The next step that you're gonna do is, in the shepherd pie, is you're gonna chop up your mushrooms and your celery. So you wanna do that. So we're gonna do about eight ounces of chopped up mushrooms. And I love mushrooms. And like I said, in England, you can get them wild and fry them. And if you've never had fried bread before, that's 
like a wonderful delicacy that I learned to love. So now we have our mushrooms all done and we're gonna chop up our onions and we're gonna chop up our celery. So let me put these in a bowl right here. And I, I have to tell you, shepherd's pie is usually a winter dish, but I, I like it anytime actually, it's great. So we're gonna put those right there for now. Chop up our celery, hold on. Chop up our celery, we'll do it right here. And so this has got vegetables and the true, the true shepherd's pie, not cottage pie. And there's two different kinds of pie. One is cottage pie, which is made with beef, right? And the other one is shepherd's pie. Now think about shepherds, they have lambs, remember? So that's the reason why they use lamb. So we have ground lamb today and it's organic. It's kind of fat free. We're not gonna use much oil in this because there is a little fat in lamb, so we're gonna do it. And they want you to chop up the actual leaves as well in this recipe. So there you go, so that's that. Now let's do our onion. And you wanna chop up your onion fine. So let's do that. Take this out of the way. We don't need those right there. And we're gonna combine all of this in a few minutes. But the first thing that we're gonna do in a second is we're gonna put our lamb into uh, this hot, gotta turn that on. And we're gonna get that done. And then we're gonna put that aside. So you do the lamb first, and then you add uh, your onions and your, your celery and, you, and your mushrooms, and you combine those and you saute those. So this is what we're doing right now. And we're almost done. So it's one medium onion. And I use sweet onions, because I think they taste so good. And actually, my producer, who's my husband, he loves them too. So we tend to like a sweeter onion, like the Dahlia onions or whatever. So this is a really simple dish that I think you're gonna love. So, and you wanna get these onions to sweat a little bit. And then you're gonna put everything, you're gonna combine everything into your casserole dish and you're gonna put it in the oven at 400 degrees. And we preheated the oven to that. So these are done. Let's put these here. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take and we're gonna, we're gonna take this and we're gonna put our lamb, our minced lamb, and you wanna see that, and we're gonna put it in here and we're gonna fry it up until it gets brown. And this is one pound. Okay, and then you can use a wooden spoon or, let's see, I'm gonna get a wooden spoon out or this. No, I need a spatula. I've got this, I've got this, Never mind. We've got a nice spatula right here. And so you're gonna break this up a little bit. And you wanna just brown this actually. And so if the camera guy can get a look at this. And you can smell the lamb. And actually, lamb's not hard to get um, at the store. Um, they sell lots of different products at the stores I go to. And actually, the lamb is beautiful. When we lived in Turkey later on, we used to eat a lot of lamb. And so, let's get this done. So we're gonna let that do its job. And, all right, we're gonna put this on here and let it go. Because I told you it had enough oil in it, so I didn't add a, a, enough another thing of oil. So the other thing that we need is we need a teaspoon of this wonderful thyme. So I'm going to cut this thyme up here so I get at least a teaspoon. And I'm also going to use rosemary in this recipe as well. So we have rosemary, we have chicken broth, we have wonderful things, beef broth. You're going to love this recipe. It's so easy. We'd love for you to send us your recipes to our Katherine Raker show, our Chef You and I show. And 
We will feature your recipes on our recipe cards, which would be really kind of cool. We take recipes on our show and we make them a healthy recipe. So this one particularly has only got 278 calories in it. So there we go. We're gonna use a little bit. Okay, so we don't need this anymore. All right, so we, we need to take a short break um, for a minute, and we'll be right back on Catherine Raker's The Chef You and I. We're back on The Chef You and I, and now we're going to saute our mushrooms, our onions, and our wonderful celery. So you want to saute all those. So that's what we're going to do right now. So let's do that. The skillet's hot, right? I'm going to put those in. And this is going to be so delicious. The lamb turned out really beautiful. And so then we're going to assemble. And that's basically what, when you make shepherd's pie, you're assembling stuff. And then you're putting your mashed potatoes on top of it. And it's going to, it's going to be this beautiful dish in the end. And then at the very end, you're going to, after you bake it, you're going to broil uh, the top to get the potatoes, you know, just nice and little brown, they're gonna be beautiful. Okay, so then I'm gonna add my mushrooms. And maybe we'll use the producer for a little bit of oil. All right, we're gonna put all those in there because I love mushrooms and I know you do too. So, let's do that. So, until they just get nice and, uh, soft. That's all you want to do. You just want to saute them until they get a little soft and then we'll do that. So thank you. And this is virgin olive oil. I'm just going to put a little bit of virgin olive oil in here, maybe a tablespoon at the most. Okay. And just pour it gently over that. That's just about a tablespoon. Okay. And then we'll let that work and we'll put a little bit of salt and pepper on there sea salt I love kosher or sea salt it's so delicious so all of these wonderful things basically what I like about this is that it's all fresh so they're asking for all fresh ingredients when you're doing this right and so you get all your vegetables you get everything in this dish so we're gonna cover them for a little while, okay? And they'll be done in a second. Okay, our potatoes are doing their number. And so then what we're gonna do, after we do all of that, we get the, the everything sauteed, we're going to actually mash our potatoes when they're done. And I'm gonna add a little bit of sour cream in it or maybe you could even use some Philadelphia cream cheese to give it that little bit smoother feel. And you're also going to add your butter into it. And you're going to mash, just like you make mashed potatoes, a little bit of salt and pepper. And that's going to be the topper of our uh, program for shepherd's pie. So we'll be right back. Now that the potatoes are finished uh, and they're soft, we're actually going to mash them with a masher. And instead of using milk, this is a lighter version, remember that, a lighter version of the mashed potatoes. So, and they're just so pretty, they're golden. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of the chicken broth. I'm gonna add some butter to this, and actually, so I'm gonna add a little bit of chicken broth to it. This is three quarters of a cup, but I may not use all that because I actually, don't want them to be real mushy. So, and that gives it the salt and everything that you need. And then I'm gonna add, believe it or not, I'm gonna add a little bit of either you can do reduced Philadelphia cream cheese or, now see how nice that is? Um, we're gonna use that. Now that's that, so let's add a little bit of butter to that. And I'm using a nice butter. I'm using Land O'Lakes, which I really like. Or you could use Dublin herb butter. That's a Irish butter that I like to use as well. Oops. Just 
just let that melt in there a little bit. And we're gonna actually get some wonderful cream cheese or actually maybe we'll use um, some sour cream. Let's try some sour cream. We need to add two tablespoons of reduced sour cream into our potato mixture. And this actually gives it a really nice flavor, right? And a lighter, um, a lighter dish. Since we don't want it to be 1,600 calories, we want it to be between 278 and 300 calories. So now we're mixing everything together. until you get a really nice mixture here. So you can see it looks really good. Try not to have any lumps in your potatoes. And sometimes what I'll do actually is use um, a mixer to get all those lumps out. So it looks pretty darn good to me, kids. So I'm glad I didn't add actually any more of the chicken liquid to it. Okay, so we're gonna set these aside put aside back here. And now what we're gonna do is, now that our vegetables are sauteed, we're going to actually add some of our other ingredients into it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually add the flour, frozen vegetables, some are frozen, some are fresh, and beef broth, tomato paste, and Worcester sauce. So I'm gonna blend that up before I put it in there. So I need to get a little bowl. Okay, let me get it over here. And we're gonna mix all those up so we don't get lumps. And that's really important, not to have lumps. So I'm gonna take my flour and my broth and I'm gonna add the broth in to the bowl. And slowly, I'm gonna add the flour into it so that it gets blended, okay? You don't want lumps. But that doesn't taste so good. So now it looks good. So I'm gonna add a little bit more flour into it. And that's the trick, is to not have lumps in your in your broth. So you can see what I'm doing here. See, you can see that there's no lumps. Or get rid of the lumps when you're doing it. And if you have to use a strainer in the end, don't worry about it. So we just need to add a little bit more. Just keep on adding it until you get it. So you get the point. So this is gonna taste delicious, I think. I'm, I'm adding wine into this mixture as well. So we're gonna have wine in here. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of the wine in here right now. And this is a red wine. Some people call for a, actually, a white wine, but I wanted to use a red wine because I think it makes it look, you know, better, taste better, and I like dry red wine in my, okay, whoops, we can add all of that to it. So that's the whole trick to not having lumps, is to stir it and get it ready to go into that hot pot that we're gonna use here. So let's add in all of our other, um, our, our actual tomato paste right here. Hold on, tomato paste right here. And that's two tablespoons of or yeah, that's, let's see, two teaspoons of tomato paste, okay? And that gives it a nice look too and a nice flavor. So here's two teaspoons. Okay, put that aside and mix that in well. So that's got wine, tomato paste, and then we're gonna add in the rosemary leaves that are over here. And, and if you don't have fresh, then you can use dry. It'll work just the same. And I reconstitute them. And then you're gonna add a teaspoon of wonderful thyme. That's about a teaspoon right there. Okay. 
time. So these are great, wonderful spices that you can put in there. I don't use garlic in my, I don't use garlic in my uh, recipes because as you all know, I'm allergic to garlic. So here's our Worcestershire sauce that we're gonna put in. So this gives all of it, everything. And then I'm using some salt and ground pepper. Looks good to me, can't wait to eat it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this up a little. Um, I think it's plugged in. No, I turned it off. Let's turn it on. That would be important. Okay. And then I'm going to add this to um, my wonderful um, um, mushrooms and onions. And all right, that looks good. Looks great. And then we're going to add all of our carrots and... And sometimes you can use an onion gravy if you want to along with this. So let's add in our wonderful peas and carrots and corn. So you wanna add all that in. That is really nice. And then our corn. I'll use, I'm gonna reserve some of my corn for some other, but this is about a pound of corn or not corn, carrots, I'm sorry. And carrots are a really big staple in England. People love carrots in England. So that looks really beautiful. Now, if you wanted to put an oven, if you wanted to put a onion gravy on this, you could. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of the beef bouillon to that and the wine. Let's do that. Oops. Well, this looks and smells delicious, actually. And it's a lighter version. That's the nice thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover that for a few minutes till it heats up. And then I'm going to put the mashed potatoes on the top of it. And we're going to bake it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 35, 40 minutes. So we need to let this cook for about eight to 10 minutes, it says. So let's put the top back on and we'll go from there. We're gonna take a short break. And now my friends, uh, we're going to add, I started adding the actual um, bee, uh, lamb and our vegetables and everything that's gonna go into our shepherd's pie. And so I'm gonna, I'm using a slotted spoon because I don't want a lot of liquid in here. I want some, but not enough. So we may even have some left over, I don't know, it's filling up pretty fast for another day, which would be great. And you want to put your potatoes on top of that. So that looks good. Maybe just a little bit more. I could make an individual one for me during the week. That would be good. So my husband and I really love really love this more than you can ever imagine. So we're just about there. I think I can get it all in here. What do you know about that? All right. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside. And we're actually gonna let this cool off for a minute because I don't want the potatoes to, to melt into, into the actual um, dish. So let's just let that rest for a few minutes and then we're gonna add our potatoes and they'll go in on top of it and we'll go from there, okay? And now kids, it's time to be able to put your potatoes on top of your wonderful ground lamb, your minced lamb and all your vegetables and the lovely gravy that it made. And this is what it's gonna look like. So if the camera guy can get a picture of that, that would be really good. And then we're gonna add the potatoes on top of the actual mixture. And then we're gonna bake it in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And then we're gonna put it under the broiler for a few minutes so that you can actually get the top, just a little brown on the top, just to make it look like little fluffy pillows. So let's do this. So you're gonna add this, and you can pipe it too, okay? But you wanna make sure that actually 
you do not put this on a really hot, you know, uh, filling because you want the the potatoes. And these are, the potatoes are not hot right now. I actually uh, let them cool off, and I added the two eggs that we need to do. And I scrambled those eggs and put them into the potato mixture. Doesn't that look beautiful? And that pound, almost two pounds of potatoes actually did this. Now these, these mashed potatoes actually will um, fluff up. And let's just add the rest of it. And like I said, you could pipe it if you wanted to. I didn't because a lot of people don't know how to pipe. So I thought it would be just as easy to use this. And then you just want to spread that. I love this spoon because it spreads so easy. And so it's going to be really pretty. So I'm going to put this in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes at 400 degrees, which you already preheated the oven for this. Okay, we'll be right back after these messages. We're back on the chef, you and I, and we're making Scottish red lentil soup. And it actually is beef stock. We're not using any meat in it. We're using beef stock, or you can use a beef bone and go ahead and cook that beef bones up and then skim off the fat. But I'm using just beef bouillon and a little bit of, um, believe it or not, I'm going to add a little chicken bouillon too because I wanted to have enough here for this whole, for this whole soup. And unfortunately, my husband doesn't like lentil, but I do. And um, it's so good for you. It's such a healthy soup. You can add that to it. And then we're just going to put a lot in there. And you can add water to it, too. Um, but the, the ingredients are really simple. You've got carrots. You've got, actually, onions. I'm using parsnips. You can use rutabaga. You can use turnip. But any of those wonderful vegetables you can use. So we're going to add another beef. I think I did. No, I didn't get it all in there. So you want to get all that wonderful bouillon in there or beef broth. And I use the fat free, uh, which is really good. Salt free, bit, you know, so it makes it much better for you, healthier for you. I use this skillet all the time. It's really a wonderful skillet. And this soup actually takes about 45 minutes. And uh, we're going to give you the ingredients on our recipe uh, program on our show. So we're done with that. We're done with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add, we're going to cut up our wonderful celery. And I've already added, there's a, actually, um, in the, the uh, lentils, you have about a, a cup to two cups of red lentils. And you take them and you add an inch of water to it and let it soak. Now you can actually add barley to this if you wanted to have red lentil and barley soup, but we're just doing red lentil soup. So it's one and one third cups of red lentils. So they're ready to go, but we already have our parsnips and what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually cut up our, cube our parsnips. And these are delicious. And you know, you can have the soup actually with all the vegetables in it or what you can do is you can actually puree it which i like to do and i like to use yogurt on top of it it's so good so now these are basically all cubed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put these into the liquid okay and i did something different i mean some people really like some people really like carrots you know just like scores of carrots i happen to like carrots that are shredded like this because they taste just as good and they're wonderful. So add those. And that's two or three carrots actually. And I want to get my little trusty dusty um, scooper out because I like using this. Just put that into your liquid. 
Let me get a little closer. And then what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to put our onion in there. And then our celery and our lentils. And then we're just going to let it simmer for about 45 minutes. Okay, so I'm, next we're going to do actually the onions. And I love, onions are easy to cut, actually. You don't have to make a big deal out of it, actually. And you see wonderful chefs on TV that do it so fast you can't even see it. Don't feel alone. Took me a while to learn knifing skills, believe me. So, or you can use your food processor and do it if you don't really like to do this part of it. But you want chopped up onions. You're going to add that to the, um, the wonderful soup. And, you know, I love soups because they're so good for you. And especially if you're on a diet, like I'm always on a diet. And we try to do healthy things on our cooking show. So here's one onion. I'm going to add that to the soup pot. Okay. Then we'll do one more onion and our celery. So if you've got recipes that you'd like to send us, please send it to kraker123 at gmail.com and we will be glad to try your recipes and if you have recipes that are heavy duty and you want to get the calorie count the carb count down the you know the sugars give us send us your recipes and we'll use them on our show we'll invite you to our show and guess what you can have your recipes on our recipe cards which are really fun so it looks like our mash is done so let me turn around and turn it off and look at it, okay? Oh, wow, that looks beautiful. Now what we want to do is we want to wait a second. We're going to take a little short break so that we can put it under the broiler. Now that our shepherd's pie is out of the oven and ready to serve, I'm so excited. It's one of my favorite meals on earth. And I'll have a little salad with it or maybe a little coleslaw or something. But it's, it's a meal in one. It's delicious. And I had a little taste of it before the break so uh, we put it all together so it was really really good so now we need to concentrate on our lentil soup because it's boiling and I need to get the celery I need to get our celery and I need to get our lentils into the pot so let's do this and get this done so I'm using this knife celery I love celery it's it's really it's so refreshing and in salads a lot of people don't like celery because they don't think it has any nutritional value, but I like it. I think it's great. I like the crispness of it. I love fresh vegetables, and you should too. It's really, they're really good for you. And this is a way that you can really lose weight easily. And I'm going to use actually some leaves in this as well. It did call for leaves, so I am putting some leaves in. You can take those out in the end. Or, like I said, you can puree it. If you don't want your lentil soup, if you like lentil soup that's already pureed, then do it with that. Boy, that looks, smells so good. So we're just about ready with this. And, and then you want to time it for around 45 minutes. Okay, so your celery's all done. Let's put that into the um, pot. Boiling nicely. Get that in there. Okay. And we're going to add our red lentils now. So we have all of it. And we're going to add a little bit of kosher or sea salt. So here's your lentils. And they puffed up when we did that. And that's good. And that looks delicious. We're just going to add a little bit of water to this so we get all of the lentils. And we'll do that and go like that and get all the lentils. There you go. So now all you have to do is cover it for 45 minutes and we'll put the timer on for it. And you just let it simmer. That's it. Really simple, easy soup to make. Two carrots, celery stalk, turnips. Uh, vegetable stock or beef stock, uh, two small onions diced, um, beef stock. Um, I added a little chicken stock to it, one and a third cups of red lentils rinsed, kosher sea salt, beef bouillon, 
and black pepper. So we're going to add some black pepper and some salt. I love this is so going to be so delicious. I love lentil soup. And when we lived in Turkey, I used to eat lentil soup all the time. So, and then we can just put this aside and we will be good. And guess what? We'll be right back after these messages with bangers and mash and then our wonderful dessert. We'll be right back. We're back on The Chef You and I, and we're making Irish bangers and mash recipe. And instead of using potatoes like you normally do, we want to keep the calories low, so we're going to do mashed cauliflower. It tastes just like mashed potatoes, except it's not. It's cauliflower. We're not using frozen cauliflower. We are using, actually, we're using uh, fresh cauliflower, and I'm going to do it in the microwave so that it will get done quickly, right? So, and we're gonna mash this cauliflower. We're gonna add water to it in a minute. And if you've never had mashed cauliflower, you're gonna love it. It's really, really good. Because we're gonna add cream cheese to it, and we're gonna add some other things to it to make it really taste good. So, let's do that. And so you wanna break your cauliflower up. Or you can use frozen cauliflower, so you would be using two packages of frozen cauliflower. So I'm using fresh because cauliflower was so cheap right now that it's great. It's easy to use, easy to do, and I like cauliflower. So and if you're if you're not liking cauliflower, then do some some wonderful golden potatoes, Yukon potatoes. They're really good and they're very lower in calories. Um, and they make a great mash. So right after this, we are going to put this into our corning wear bowl and we're going to have enough and you want to and so for each serving one serving of a banger right and it is actually only 61 calories that's super you could do this for lunch or you know you have a crowd over kids love bangers um, you can use sweet italian sausages we don't get the english bangers that you do or British or Irish bangers that you do very easily here in the States. So I either use a, um, what was I going to say? I either use um, just sweet Italian sausage or sausage that doesn't have any garlic in it because you know that I can't eat garlic. So we're just about, I think that's about as much as we're going to need here. I'll use a little bit more and save this for a salad. Okay. We're going to add some water to this. And we're going to steam this cauliflower. And I'm going to get some water real quick. And we'll add some water to it. And it'll be done in a few minutes. So if you want to do it on top of the stove, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes on top of the stove. It doesn't take that long in the microwave, or at least it doesn't seem like that. And you want to add a little salt to this. I always use sea salt. Okay, I'm going to put this in the microwave. And then we're going to take a little break and we're going to be back and we're going to put in our sausages into a hot skillet. We're back and we're actually, we've got our cauliflower in the microwave and that'll be done in a few minutes. And when that gets soft, we'll make it into mashed potatoes. But in the meantime, we're going to actually brown our bangers. So I'm putting them in right now and we'll brown them up, right? Put the top on there and just let it go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice up our onions and we're gonna add all of our other ingredients and we're gonna make a like a deglaze kind of gravy for the bangers to put into the bangers. But you're just gonna slice the onions this time. You're not gonna cube them or make them into you know, small onion pieces. So anyhow, this is really going to be good. This is the, actually uh, an easier, smarter way to make your bangers. It's healthier. And for 61 calories, I can handle it. So let's do that. 
So let's just slice up those onions. And my husband loves onions, and so do I. But they gotta be cooked, for me, at least. I don't know about you, but they have to be for me. So, you know, this is one of the most common um, dishes over in England, even in Scotland. And um, they just love, and I like to eat it actually with a little Branson pickle. Uh, I really love it. It tastes delicious. So let's see how these guys are doing. Yeah, they're browning up really nice. And so we're also going to add a couple of other ingredients to this. We're going to add in um, two onions, beef broth, uh, coconut flour or arrowroot flour, um, butter or coconut oil, three tablespoons of cream cheese, salt, pepper. I'm not using the garlic powder. I'm using garlic, um, onion salt and uh, a teaspoon of basil. So I have fresh basil here, which we're going to put into it. It's going to taste delicious. And these guys look like they're doing really well in here. We're browning those guys up. And we'll let those go for a little while until they get thoroughly done. And then we're going to add all that together. And um, we are making kind of a gravy with this with our onions, which I think you'll like. And that's what I'm adding a little bit of HP into. I love that sauce. It's so delicious. And that'll be good. So let's take a break and we'll be right back on The Chef You and I. Our bangers are finished and now we're doing our onions and our soup as you can see is already finished and I like it pureed. So you can see how beautiful it looks and I can't wait to try it. There's the bangers and now what we're doing is the cauliflower is done. We are going to mash our cauliflower to start and then we're going to add the other uh, the butter and also the other, uh, the cheese to it. And as soon as we get that done, then we'll use the, either an emulsion or you can use your beater. Or I could use my, I could use my, what you call it, um, my food processor. Could do it either way, doesn't matter, but you want to get it blended. Okay, and we're getting there. Takes a little time. Need to look at these onions for a minute. They're going, they're doing really well. We're going to add in our beef broth to that in just a moment. Makes up a nice little gravy that you're going to serve over the bangers. And here we go. This looks looking better as we do this. So this is taking the place, remember, of potatoes. So they're not going to be exactly like potatoes, but when you add on the wonderful things that we're adding to it, it's going to taste similar to potatoes, except it has a little bit of a different flavor to it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add our wonderful cream cheese. And I like the whipped kind myself, right? And that's three tablespoons of that cream cheese. Now, you can either use coconut oil, which is three tablespoons of coconut oil, or you can use the regular butter. And since my husband prefers butter, we're gonna use butter. So this is nicely um, soft, and that's what you want. We're gonna add this, and that'll be really nice takes a little time, so give it some time. And you're going to put salt and pepper in here in just a minute. And I think I will use the mixer for a second. We're going to take a little break, and when we come back, you'll see the, the cauliflower is all done. Okay? We're now back, and we have our bangers. They're finished, along with the onions and the gravy on top of the bangers, along with our beautiful cauliflower mash. And over on this side, we have our lentil soup. Now, some people like to see the vegetables in their lentil soup, and um, but I like to puree it, and I think it tastes so much better that way. But this is the beautiful cauliflower mash with a little bit of basil on it. So, our last dish that we're making today is a dessert, a Scottish dessert. 
and we'll be right back after these important messages. Now we're going to make a wonderful dessert that's a Scottish dessert. My son actually called me, who is, his ancestors are Scottish, and uh, their clan is called the Ross clan. And so he asked me to make this, and it's called Cranachan. Uh, and it's usually done for Robert Burns' night where they have haggis, and it's a wonderful evening. You have Glenfiddich, you have a wonderful meal, a Scottish meal, and this tops it off. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually, uh, we had already used whiskey, um, actually uh, two tablespoons, one-third cup of Scotch which whiskey, let me say that again, one-third cup of scotch whiskey and we took the pinhead oatmeal which is right here and we actually soaked it into the beautiful pinhead oatmeal and that's what it looks like when you get done so you want to do that so and then you want to save some for the very top of the the actual um, top of the dessert so we're going to put those aside I'm going to smash those a little bit I'm going to add a little sugar to them and then you're going to have cream as well. So two tablespoons of sugar. And they have it right here. And we'll add two tablespoons of sugar to this. And we're going to add honey to this mixture as well. So I'm going to add a little sugar. You could use Splenda if you wanted to, but it's not the same. So let's do this. A little bit of sugar in here. And those are all fresh raspberries. So... Just make that like that, and you're ready for, that's one thing that you can put aside now. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is actually you're going to toast your pinhead oatmeal, which is one-third of a cup of pinhead oatmeal, and you really have to watch this. So we're going to take it over here, we're going to turn this on, and we're going to just brown these really quick. So I think these are about done. And I'm going to turn that off in a second, just a minute. Bring those back over here. Now, the next step is, is that we are going to take our, our heavy cream, and we need two cups of heavy cream right here. And here's a cup. And you can see how heavy this is. That's one cup, and we want to take and do two cups. And that's almost this whole bottle. All right, you don't want to, you want to make sure you get all of that cream out of there. This is really good stuff. It's almost like a trifle in a sense, except it doesn't have a sponge in it. That's the difference. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our beaters and we're going to whip this. We're going to whip up our heavy cream until it has stiff peaks. You want to whip the cream until it gets a little thick. Then you add the two tablespoons of honey, which we have right here. And that's raw honey, organic honey. This really makes it taste good. I'm going to get all that good honey in there. Okay, and when you're done with that, then you're going to add in your whiskey. You're going to add in the whiskey which is two tablespoons of the Glenfiddich whiskey. And then you're going to add, um, then you're going to continue to whip it until it gets stiff peaks. And then the next thing we're going to do is put in the beautiful um, oat, pinhead oatmeal that was soaked in whiskey. So here we go. We're done mixing it, and you can see that it's got peaks to it. So then you want to add in this lovely, uh, pinhead oatmeal that we soaked with uh, the Glen Fittish. Okay, so let me do that. I'm going to fold that in. So doesn't that look pretty? Yeah, it does. Looks great. Now you don't want to serve this. Uh, you don't want to make it in the morning and then like wait all day. You don't want to do that. You want to, you actually want to do this ahead of time. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to spoon in our raspberries to start 
Okay, we're going to put these in the bottom of the glass, right, or the whiskey glass, and then you're going to add your cream. So you're going to add this. We'll wipe it off in a minute. And then we're going to add, hold on, I need to get it. Oh, I have it right here. I'm going to wipe that off. Gently wipe it off. Okay, and then one more layer of this. Because you want it to go all the way to the top of the glass. Okay, you want to see that really pretty fruit, right? And then one more little layer. One more touch, just a second. And then we're going to put some raspberries, our raspberries on top of that. Well, just a second. This happens. A couple raspberries. Pick out the prettiest ones you can, like that. And maybe a little one right here. Okay? And then we're going to use our toasted, our toasted um, pinhead oatmeal to kind of garnish it off. And we'll make two of those. Look at how pretty that is. Well, we're finished with our beautiful dessert, our Cran Achan, wonderful dessert, Scottish dessert. And see how easy it was to make? I want you to join us the next time when our journey will be to Italy. But thank you for joining us today on the wonderful Chef You and I show's journey to the British Isles. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.